So here we are. We are, <coughs> excuse me, we are live here on campus. As you can see, the snow is falling in winter. It would seem after a couple weeks, or a couple months rather, of teasing us with mild temperatures and lack of snow has finally arrived. I uh, want to welcome the four or five viewers we have right now that are watching. Feel free to chat. If there's something you want to see, just type it into the chat box. I can maneuver the camera around, but right now we're looking at the tower through the, uh, the entrance here to Ho Plaza. It is snowy. It is uh, rather cold, I might add, too. Probably did not dress as appropriately as one should, but we're going to uh, we're going to give it a go here anyway. As uh, you can see, the umbrellas are out. Interesting way to beat the snow, and we're going to try to hold this as steady as possible and make our way through the uh, through the plaza. Classes have not resumed yet. Well, not most of them anyway, but there are a number of students on campus. West. Stop. Turn to which way? I'm being asked to turn to turn to Guthrie. This way? <laughs> oh, you're inside the building. I get it. You're inside. You're inside Gannett. I bet it's a lot warmer in there than it is right here. <laughs> Thanks for tuning in. Yeah. I'll try to enjoy the afternoon. It's pretty cold out. Thanks for tuning in. We're going to continue on. Some viewers from inside the Gannett Center teasing me with warmth and comfort. But hey, it's nice to be out of the office, walking around out in the snow. It's been a long wait, honestly, for the snow this year. Kind of missed it, but that longing for winter will disappear probably within the next 48 to 72 hours. Here we have McGraw Tower. Everyone's familiar with that? Over to my right. And if you can see through the trees there. Sage Hall out in the distance. Snow blowing in the face. A look back at where we were just at. Snow coming into your coming into your living room, your cube, whatever it may be that you're watching from right now. And then of course we have Willard Strait. Fairly quiet. There's another gentleman trying to fight the precipitation. With an umbrella. Umbrellas are not just for rain in upstate New York. As all of you probably recall. As we make our way up past the Cornell store. Might have to duck in there and get warm a little later. Maybe pick up a hoodie. Or perhaps some sort of Cornell hockey memorabilia or apparel to help fight the cold temperatures. I think I have a 25% off token somewhere somewhere here in my pocket. But it may be expired. Entrance to flag hanging proudly and coldly. Age Chapel, where 
I may have to go and pray for warmth. And here's a, as you can see here, a student climbing the slope up the whole plaza. How many people remember that? Uh, sure, yeah, I'll head up to the Arch Quad next. No problem. Let's see if we can interact here. Tough climb up the slope today. <laughs> it's salted at least. <laughs> All right, and again, here we so look back. This young lady's wearing a shirt that says Ithaca is gorgeous. Everyone's familiar with that shirt. And today, it could be up for debate. But come on, you got to light the snow a little bit, right? So, there was a quest for the Arch Quad, and so we will make Arch Quad. We'll look out over the uh, over the slope here. Maybe there's some ambitious ambitious students out on lunch trays. So I don't know. They may still be mostly home for the break still, enjoying and recovering. Recovering from their way anyhow. Again, if you're watching, uh, if you're somewhere you want to go, something you want to see, just put it in the chat box and I will try to make it come true. Oh, Alejandro from Puerto Rico teasing us. Oh, that's torturous. Sunny Puerto Rico. Well, Alejandro, we appreciate you tuning in anyways. Glad we could provide this moment of nostalgia for you <laughs> as we look out over the slope. Looks like they had the plows out at least and salting down the sidewalks. Always nice to run into one of those this path not maintained signs on a day like this. Alejandro, what's the, uh, what's the temperature out there right now in Puerto Rico? Where I'm at, it's about 18, I think. <laughs> That's Fahrenheit, by the way. I know there might be some meteorology majors watching. Here's another look over the slope. I don't see anyone sledding at this point, but uh, the day is still young. Maybe happy hour will inspire some sled sledders a little bit later. See the war memorial down there. Can't really see down into the valley. A little too snowy for that. 85, Alejandro says. 85 in Puerto Rico right now. Yeah. Alejandro, I moved back to Ithaca about a year ago from L.A., so I'm missing it. I am certainly missing it at times. But, hey, it's the first real snowfall of the year. So for right now, I'm going to enjoy it. And here's another look at Willard Strait. back over the slope and now uh, we will continue on to the before mentioned arch quad. Do we have any, any arts in snow? I'm on actually. So if the camera goes straight up in the air and you see the sky, then you can pretty much assume that uh, I'm on my back. But as long as I'm not concussed, I promise I'll get it if possible. Wouldn't want you to miss out on this lovely Indica. Noah says, I'm an Aggie, but that's a long walk from where you are. Hey, Noah. 
It's Friday. This is what I do. And there you have it. There's the path I just went down. Might have been useful from a, uh, it was on the other side of the path, too. That might have uh, sent me a different direction, but. Oh, Alejandro, you then the fact that you're teasing us with the warm weather. We're in for a treat as we make our way to the art squad here. This weeping willow tells the story here. Uh, Mike, I'm currently over the mobile network. Um, I typically, when I do this, don't connect to the Wi-Fi network, even though it is does drop out. Uh, find at least in this in this uh, particular format, the 3G network is the most reliable. Though you might see some slow moments um, because the the signal definitely does vary. But typically, it won't completely drop out. So just try to stick with it. And the, the less I move the camera around, usually the better the feed is as well. <laughs> Request. So there was venture up that way. That's not out of the question as we make our way through the arts quad here. Yeah, Noah, that is correct, by the way. Yeah, the, these, these are the ones you expect when you're uh, having Easter dinner and there's a uh, nor'easter hitting. That's when, that's when the, uh, the, you really become dejected. <clears throat> so, 11 viewers right now. Thanks for tuning in. It's Friday on the Coronel campus. My phone says it's... 2.42 Eastern Standard Time, just to show you, as you can see, some construction. It's been going on for quite a while. And hello, Mr. Cornell, just celebrated his day. Uh, Alejandro, they've been do doing renovating to McGraw Hall uh, really since the summer. Um, actually, well, we can uh, take a look here. I don't know how I'm looking at, but McGraw Hall Facade Stabilization Project. All constructed in 1872, was designed by Archimedes Russell in the Second Empire style of architecture. The Grow Hall is constructed from Ithaca bluestone with a mansard slate roof of different colors arranged in horizontal bands and bullseye dormers. This four-story building is honored with the first of many of the university's towers. Um, uh, so it looks like an investigation revealed the need to stabilize the exterior masonry facade, or facade, I'm sorry, facade. Too cold, I can't even think of my reading skills. Um, the proposed stabilization effort is to temporarily brace the masonry construction until a permanent repair can be implemented. So that is what's going on with McGraw Hall. There. Like they're stabilizing some of the structure, simply collapse, which is probably for the best. Uh, as we were saying, Ezra, happy birthday, 205 years young. Look, for anyone can, staring across uh, Andrew Dixon White, who will make our way up there. Oh, there's some bells for you. I won't interrupt.
And there's a little bit of a chime action for you. As we make our way across the uh, arts quad here. And the snow and breeze are whipping right across the quad today. Hands and legs getting a little numb. We make our way toward Mr. White. Who <laughs> looks like he's been the recipient of much more accumulation than Ezra. Ezra's uh, pretty bare, but it looks like uh, Andrew here's somewhat blanketed with white stuff. That is a chilly chair today. Here, yeah, yeah, Alejandro, all around me, as you'll see, are the, uh, I don't know if you can make it out. Oh, Noah, with a good pun. <laughs> uh, yeah, maintenance signs are all around the quad still. That hasn't changed. Still just as treacherous as ever. When will the arts get some respect, honestly? Um... All right, we're going to pass through Goldwyn Smith Hall here. I'm pretty confident we should be able to maintain the signal going into the building, but if it gets a little slow, I should emerge from the other side fairly soon. Sorry about that. I keep getting my glove in the way. As we climb up the steps... Goldwyn Smith, we can look out here over the quad. Pretty quiet out there today. Pretty quiet. Oh, we got a new viewer. Welcome. If you just joined us, we're at the Arts Quad. We started down and O Plaza, made our way through the Arts Quad. Now we're about to walk into Goldwyn Smith Hall on this snowy Friday afternoon up on the hill. And there's a young student being forced to brave the Arts Quad where no winter maintenance is the name of the game. And here we go. Temple of Zeus, closed for the day or for the season, one or the other. Of course, the sculptures, statues, the hand sanitizer, as if any bacteria could live on my hands right now. Absolutely freezing. our way up the stairs and to the office of the dean. I don't think they really want to socialize probably, so we'll keep moving. We stroll down the hall. Any of these classrooms look familiar to anybody? Probably haven't changed much over the years. Is the, uh, is the center open? Is that what you're asking, Alejandro? Uh, I don't know. It doesn't look like anybody's in there. Oh, there is somebody in there. 
Is there somewhere you want to go? Oh, I think the dean's office is down the hall now. I think it's a rather relatively new office, so I don't even think this is where the dean resides anymore, but I could be wrong. Uh, Brian, they did not close the campus. Campus is open. So there's not a whole lot of life out there. We'll make our way upstairs and exit. Well, actually, we're going to move on. We're going to move on up the hill, back into the cold, make our way into the new physical sciences building. is where the recent cloaking breakthrough was made. Maybe you read about that online or watched our Cornell alumni YouTube video interview with the researchers. But this is where the research happened and continues to be worked on, making things disappear in time through the manipulation of light. Now what we need is those flying cars and we're all set. Blustery, blustery day. But that's why we're out here. Catching the first snowfall, significant snowfall I should say, of the year. Nice Friday. And there's the art squad below us. Hold still for a second. Usually the video quality is better when I'm not moving as much. So here's Goldwyn Smith in front of me. Um, yeah, Brian, I don't think it closes much. Blizzard of 93 was a bad one. I grew up in the Binghamton area, so I went through that as a kid. And Lincoln Hall over in front of you right now. And down over there, if you can see, is the new Milstein Hall, which opened up just a few months ago. Beautiful building for the AAMP students. If you haven't seen that yet, check it out the next time you come to campus. So we're going to go in the classic side of the physical sciences, and then we'll make our way back into the new building. If you haven't seen the new building, stick around. It's very nice. And the transition between the old building and the new building was very well done. So we make our way up the hill, try to... This is a better view. I can go backwards again. Get a shot of the sky. He just went down on his back. <coughs> but he'll be back. I won't. I won't stay down long. I promise. Okay. So here we are. So we make our way into. Science building. Whew. Here we are in Baker. Oh. I think Baker, I think ovens, I think my hands could reside in one of those
Jesus right now. But we will stroll through Baker. Recognize any of these people? Any of these uh, professors? See anybody you recognize? Let me know. Besides professors, probably been here for a while. I don't, I don't think they over in the chemistry field, but you never know. As always, here at Cornell. As we make our way into the physical sciences building. app called Bambooser, E-R, and you can download it from the App Store, and all you need is a good wireless or 3G connection, and you can shoot live video right back to your Facebook page. So, it's nice as we look up into here. Of the new physical C. The outside of the old building. <laughs> well, Val, yeah, lots changed since '93, I'm sure. But there's nothing wrong with a little nostalgia. Shouldn't make you feel old. Memories make you outside of the building. Uh, just exists here within the new building. Uh, Brian, I'm using my iPhone 4, actually. That's what I'm using to shoot this. So they just connected the new building right to the old one. Oh, I shouldn't say the old one. It's the Baker. Out here, there's McGraw Tower and McGraw Hall in the background. It looks like Noah looked up uh, Cornell closing in 2007. Appreciate the research, Noah. As we make our way down, only to have to go back up again. But that's life, isn't it? Sometimes you have to go down so that you can go up. Making our way, here you can see a little flat, flat screen in the new building as it changes over, rotating around, showing the different faculty. There's the entrance to chemistry and chemical biology. And we'll stroll into a lounge area here where there's actually a small cafe. So we make our way to Clark Hall. And another informational monitor. We have a lounge area. This is the James McConnell Clark Atrium. Beautiful room for students to relax, and socialize, study. Really, really nice area. 
just remember that great buildings like this are always come about because of generous support from alumni like yourselves. So it's appreciated. The students sure appreciate it. This is a beautiful, beautiful building. And a lot of good things are happening here. As we stroll by the Department of Physics, and we look back, and make our way outside here, back into the cold. How long did you work there, Alejandro? What kind of work did you do? And we're back. And we emerge. Whew, I think the snow's picking up a little bit. Hitting me right in the face here. And here we come out and find Bailey Hall. Oh, okay. You worked at the LSP Resource Center for three years. Well, if your resume, I'm in the neighborhood. <laughs> we'll stroll over in front of Bailey, and then we can go over to the new Human Ecology Building, which just opened, I believe, about two months ago, back in. October, late October. Oh, okay, so it hasn't been that long, Alejandro. Boy, you got to Puerto Rico in a hurry. You didn't, you didn't waste any time. And Bailey Hall, home of Corneliana Night, Glee Club concerts. Recently, Billy Joel was here in Bailey Hall. On December 6th, I believe, he was here for a questions and answers and a little I wasn't able to get tickets, as you can imagine, in a 1,500 seat uh, hall. It went, tickets went quite quickly. Hello, Carol. Thanks for joining us. There's Bailey Hall as the snow is picking up in intensity, but it just makes it a little more festive. And over there is uh, the human ecology area. We'll head there next, as I was saying. If you haven't seen that building yet, you're really, uh, that's, that's something you're going to want to stick around for. That's a great building. I just did a little video tour of that building uh, back when it had its big opening ceremony nice inside. <laughs> we all love CU. Well, CU loves you right back. Oh, yeah. Well, I know how that goes. If your son graduated in May and he's homesick. That definitely happened to me. I graduated and fled to the West Coast, and I think for the next year I just yearned to be back at school. But it'll always be here. That's a Mallet Hall across the way there. And oh, the snow is picking up. So here we go. Make our way, uh, make our way past Bailey here, in between, in between. Bailey and Roberts. That might strike a chord for some people. <clears throat> so we make our way towards the new human ecology building. Again, here's Bailey. As we swing by the east side of Bailey. Oh, okay. So 
Nova, you're familiar with this. You're familiar with this path. Glad, glad we could help you rediscover. <laughs> uh, Martha Van Rensselaer Hall. Human ecology. Recently, uh, over the summer, I brought my, well, at the time he was three months old, two months old son, to have his brain studied via some interesting experiments. I think he did okay. Let's hope. I'll stop for a second. Well, that's a that's a pretty good hike, Noah. I'm sure, you were in very good shape throughout your your college career. So I think we're going to have to go through the building here to get to the new human ecology. I will <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, at least you didn't have to come up the hill. But they break even because they have the hot truck close by, right? Hi. Yep. Oh, here we go. We are in uh, Martha Human Ecology. Here we go. And if you look out the window here, that is the new human ecology. Yeah, you did have Louis lunch, Noah. That's true. Not quite as tempting. Most would probably argue. So there's the new building. We will head down the stairs and across the little. This is the new little human ecology uh, kind of mini quad, where when the weather's nicer, they actually. They have tables and chairs out there and a nice little social area amongst those trees. <laughs> Did I, I guess I struck a chord there with Noah. Yeah, I'm sorry. I suppose that's your neighborhood. I'm just telling you what I hear. I'm not picking sides. <laughs> uh, okay, so let's go down the stairs make our way over to that new building that I've talked up. Teased you enough. All right, we're at the bottom. Now we just got to find the door. There we go. Here's a door. Uh, Alejandro, that's a great idea, actually, and we we want to do this a lot more, especially once people start to understand uh, that it actually is a a live broadcast. Sometimes um, people tune in and don't always understand what's happening or the technology's not working well. But uh, it would be great to just focus on one department. On a, on a rotating basis that would be really definitely embraced actually let's uh, well we'll go through the new the new lobby of the human ecology building here kind of the lobby into the building well it might not be open 
not looking good. Okay. Well, <clears throat> they've locked me out. I didn't call ahead with my press credentials. We'll see if this one opens. Hey, there we go. Engineering, okay. Yeah, we can head that way, Brian. So we are now in, this is the brand new Human Ecology Building. And there are some great displays in here. Great examples of different things happening in the in the building. It's just a really uh, well well orchestrated effort here, making this building happen. And there's a more detailed video tour of the building on our Cornell Alumni YouTube channel. So if you're looking for for some more detailed information, along with interviews of the uh, some of the alumni that were here to help open it, who helped finance it. Uh, it's really great. And this is a very... <coughs> oh, sorry about that, Brian. Um, I may have been blocking the microphone with a, with a mitten. I apologize. Um, so this building is was designed with the utmost... Um, how should I say it, very uh, sustainability conscious, uh, conscious. Everything that the building's made out of is typically either local material and many times some sort of recycled material like the floors. Uh, as you can see, these, <coughs> these benches are, are wood carved from a uh, tr tree trunk. Um, just everything really is, was made and designed to be um, a, an incredible technological achievement in terms of green friendly, as far as green, build, green friendly building processes go. <coughs> Oh, NASA Mall in D.C. Wow, I did not know that. I did not know that, Noah. Matching bench. So these, it's a matching bench like this from Cornell on the National Mall in D.C. That's pretty cool. Very cool indeed. We can take a little stroll. Here's kind of like another... <coughs> This is where actually the uh, ribbon cutting took place right here. You can see kind of these neat, this long bench. This is actually a long bench with seating that goes all the way along that wall. <coughs> and here's the, here's the big sign right there to let you know where we're at. And it's a great perimeter. Building kind of sits up on the hill, overlooking uh, North Campus. If you can see in the distance there, I believe that's Helen Newman out in the distance there. A little hard to see through the through the snow falling. And you can see where it sits up here. There's actually a parking garage below this building. And even the parking garage uh, materials were, were re made with repurposed material. And again, in that YouTube video, you'll, you'll see we interviewed uh, one of the students that helped with all the sustainability efforts and really lays out everything that the building's made up of. Well, there you go. That's a uh, nice tidbit there from Noah. Thanks, Noah. I might have to have you be uh, assistant tour guide for all of these, coming up with some good facts. 
And so there's North Campus. I don't think I'm going to make it over to North Campus today. <coughs> Not unless the uh, good people from Gannett Health Center want to treat my frostbite. <laughs> All right, well, we'll see. And this is the Barter Family Bridge that goes down. Eventually, this hall leads you down to the bridge that goes over uh, BB Lake and Fall Creek Gorge. You know, what the heck? Let's go down to a gorge. You can't have a tour of campus and not see a gorge. <laughs> Thanks, Carol. As you see here, uh, no Whitner maintenance on this particular staircase, but you know, this is, this is extreme journalism here, so I'm going to I'm going to risk it. It's what I do for my constituents. constituents. As you can tell, it's getting harder and harder to talk the more I'm out in the cold. <laughs> I was careful. And we're back on treated surfaces now. Beautiful look through the trees here. Uh, you can see this. Snow is uh, sticking quite nicely to all of the trees. If they're going to be bare, it's nice to see some snow on them. For the last two months, they've just been bare. It's kind of depressing, but snow kind of brings them back to life a little bit. And here we go. Try to walk softly. So we make our way down towards BB Lake. This is pretty. Snowy, wooded area here. A walk I'm sure many of you made many, many times before. Here we go, you may be able to start to hear the roars of BB Lake. Just hold still for a second here, in case your video is a little choppy. About to hit the bridge. That leads us to North Campus. There you can see the bridge going over the gorge. The city council, you may have read, recently voted to place nets under these bridges for safety purposes. No real date yet set for that. And while the Gorge is alive today. Take a look at this. Woo! It's roaring. It is roaring. Would not be a good day to get caught in this, I <laughs> gotta tell you. You get a little bit of snowfall and look what happens. The lake gets angry. <laughs>
little bit of Niagara Falls here today. A little calmer over on this side, but... <laughs> I'm definitely getting close, Carol, but it's kind of fun being out here. And one more shot at the... Uh, <laughs> actually, we'll see if we can get on the other side here. Get a really good view of this. I'm still here, Alejandro. <laughs> Did I lose you? We'll head back through campus. We had a request for the engineering quad. And as long as uh, my camera battery extremities hold up, I think we should be able to get there. Here's a nice view of the winter landscape. <clears throat> Woo! Toes are cold. Toes are cold. Yeah, now we're going. Yeah, that's right. All for you, Alejandro. Going up the hill. Great afternoon to be outside. Yeah, it's a little cold, but it really is a pretty snowfall today. And everything's white still. There's no. The slush and salt hasn't been sitting for four months like you get in the beginning of April. It's, it's very nice. So, I'm going to kind of have to backtrack through some things we've already seen. But again, there's the... Uh, new human ecology building that we were in. We were right below that banner about 10 minutes ago. And there's a board actually that will tell you all about the how green friendly that building is. I didn't do it justice, I apologize, but I won't pretend to be a sustainability expert. But I know it's uh, earned a number of certifications. 
Yeah, Brian, I was just in NYC this past weekend covering an event. It was downright balmy. I was walking around without a coat on. I know what I need. I need one of those like four-wheel bikes that you kind of sit in. Then I could just pedal around everywhere. Might make it tough to get inside the buildings, though. Woo! It's right in the face now. Right in the face. There you got the uh, nutritional sciences, Savage Hall, and. Kinzelberg Hall. <laughs> well, Brian, I guess that most recent comment is a vote against snow in NYC. I'll let you guys battle it out. But you know you're going to get you're going to get one or two storms this year that paralyze the city. It's just how it goes. Still not worse than a garbage strike. <laughs> stick, stick to your principles, Brian. Don't compromise. It's taken you this far. At least you're not walking through campus with an iPhone held up, people wondering what you're doing while you're talking, talking to yourself. <laughs> Brian, are you going to go help Carol shovel? And so we're back. Here's another look at Bailey. You just, uh, if you missed it the last time we went by, there it is. Actually, holding quite a few viewers today. We don't do this often. It's probably only the, well, it's really only the second time I've done a real campus tour. <clears throat> Shouldn't say tour, a walk. You need to be kind of an expert to give tours. And I won't pretend to be that. So here we are at right outside Call Auditorium. Again, here's uh, Mallet Hall to the west. <laughs> I'll take your word for it, Brian. All I can think of as I continue to walk is Alejandro sitting in 85 degree Puerto Rico right now, laughing at this. So we can take a quick, uh, here we're coming to Tower Road. I'm sure many of you are familiar with the stretch of hall. We have a request for uh, Roberts Hall. I walk quickly. <laughs> well, you're welcome to post a picture on the CAA Facebook page, Alejandro. Here we go. A little Trillium Express, anybody? I don't, I don't think we need an ice cream cone today. So maybe it's one of those things where, like, when it's hot out, they tell you if you drink a hot beverage, it cools the body. Maybe a little double scoop will warm me right up. <laughs> I 
Well, if there's anybody watching from the Cornell Club of Anchorage, give me a pep talk right now. And Trillium Dining Hall. I'm sure a few of you had some meals in that wonderful establishment. Uh, and there's Mud Hall. And out in the distance there, you can see the Vet College. Unfortunately, the dairy bar is under construction and will be for quite some time. All right, take you, take you up there. So I don't know if they really have anything that would soothe me right now. <clears throat> Perhaps maybe they could make a hot chocolate with really good milk. We're crossing over Tower Road. I'm going to have to bypass Roberts Hall. Sorry, Alejandro, for the sake of uh, my battery life and time. We'll make our way here past uh, Dogan Hall. You can see Barton Hall there in the distance. This is the, uh, right here is the Industrial and Labor Relations Conference Center. For any uh, ILR alums watching out there. There's a look looking looking east. As we stroll past Barton up here on the right. Well, we're not strolling past it yet, we're strolling up to it. If it's open, it'll be a nice area to cut through. All right, Carol, have a great weekend. Thanks for tuning in. You know where to find us. Here's Comstock Hall. A Kale's Green building. There you go, Alejandro. We make our way down these stairs. Off in the distance, you can see Statler, the hotel portion of Statler, straight out in the distance as we come towards Barton. Oh, back up to 11 viewers, so if you're new, to our little broadcast here. We are live on campus. It is 3.34 p.m. on Friday afternoon. It's Eastern Standard Time. And there you can see uh, Sholkoff off in the distance there. Teagle Hall here to my left. On the other side of that, you would get to line a rink for any hockey fans as we make our way into Barton. Up to 12 viewers now. Barton Hall, now entering Barton Hall. Well, we're going to try. Oh, yeah, we got an open door. And here we go. Oh, we got some runners. This is the place to be in a day like this. Continue to, uh, continue to work on your physique, but with indoor comfort. Yeah, we know it's a little rustic, but that's what gives it its charm. So we will quickly cut across here. Hopefully we don't put any moisture on the track. Would hate to cause an accident. <laughs> yeah, Frank. Yeah, everything looks better when you take away tables. 
<laughs> it's a lot less intimidating. There's some hurdles. If somebody could hook me up with a pole right now, I would uh, maybe try to pole vault while holding the camera. That would be a feat. And you can see it looks like the uh, track team here. Track team doing a little practicing. Going through some warm-ups. As we make our way towards the west end of Barton. The basketball hoops are up. Here's the high jump. I try the high jump for you while holding the camera, but I think the state of my lower half probably would just snap off if I tried to do any sort of uh, calisthenics. So, turn back and look at the east end. There you have Barton Hall, home to many a uh, concert and comedian, final exams, events, both sporting and otherwise. You. And into the, <laughs> we make our way down into the rustic innards of Barton Hall. If you remember the men's room of Barton Hall, it hasn't changed. As a matter of fact, anyone from the class of 40 to present, it still looks the same. <laughs> yes, the marching band will, uh, the Grand Course Exchange, that's a, that's a good name. Yeah, band practice uh, still happens there on occasion. They, uh, they were certainly warming up there during homecoming. I spent some time down there. Off of the distance, you can see Rhodes Hall. And if you can make out that clock, that's the solar clock that Bill Nye just donated to the school. Uh, over the summer, he was here to dedicate that solar clock. And next to that, it's Hoy Field, where the baseball team plays. And then off of the distance, you see Sholkoff Stadium, home of big red football, sprint football, and lacrosse. So, Brian wanted the engineering quad, and I think we're going to make it. I think we're going to make it, Brian. As we pass through the outside of Barton, one last look. Got Barton Hall. Oh, you're not making me walk far at all. This is fun for me. <laughs> Believe it or not. Well, feet slid a little there, almost went down, but I got it. Good recovery. As we make our way down Campus Drive, heading east down Campus Drive, here's uh, Statler to my right. Phillips Hall coming up on the left here. Whoa, sorry, slipped. <laughs> Let's be honest, if I go down, it's going to make this that much better. You're allowed to laugh if I go down, by the way. Totally allowed to laugh. <clears throat> Snow in the throat. Sorry, there's Sage Hall. Snow falling all around us now. 
<laughs> I'm trying to be careful, trust me. Phillips Hall actually is, is I've got a great, um, let's take a step in here. This is uh, relatively new. Maybe, maybe uh, everyone watching has been through here before, but this is a great space. Uh, we held an event in here over the summer. So this is Phillips Hall. Beautiful new area. Yeah, we had an event here. We hosted a bunch of other Ivy League representatives and had a nice uh, dinner in here over the summer. Oh, wow. Lived in Sage Hall back when it was a dorm. Care to give us a year on that? <laughs> oh, and in here, look, we can see some some photo processing at work. Hard at work. <laughs> yes, yeah, very cool building, and it gets cooler as we walk in this way. And again, much like Baker Hall and the new physical sciences building, you'll see the You'll see the old building still attached, just attached to the new building, Upson Hall, attached right here to Phillips. Yeah, that's news to me too, Alejandro. I didn't know that. So just great big uh, floor-to-ceiling windows here. I think this is a great room. And we'll make our way to the engineering quadrangle. <laughs> and here we go, back out into the good stuff. <laughs> yeah, Alejandro, those, the engineers, they don't take a day off. There's always something to build. So here we are there with Sage in the in the background there. You can see uh, the garage tower, maybe, just through that tree. And pretty quiet in the engineering quad right now. Oh, there's some insight from Brian. Thank you. Yeah. For the renovation, Sage was a dorm and a dining hall. Make our way down the stairs here. Try to hold the shot over the quad. We'll cut across the quad back towards Campus Drive, Campus Road, I should say. And there's Sage. We learned today from our viewers that it was once a dorm and a dining hall. Now, of course, home to the Johnson School of the, I believe I was recently told, recently ranked a top 10 business school. <laughs> Not too shabby, but here at Cornell, as you know, we feel we're constantly the victim of rankings. That's okay. Those are just a number. And we've just about come full circle. Hard to believe. Oh, so 1997. 
renovated in 1997, it looks like, according to Brian. Brian, class of 94, shout out. <laughs> As we make our way down here, past Carpenter Hall. Brian, you probably remember Carpenter Hall. Hey, there I am. You can see me. You're not missing much. Just a guy with a mouton and some tattered gloves. So, after one hour and 17 minutes, we are back where we started. So we cruise past Olin Hall on the right here. Myron Taylor Hall in the distance, the law school. Hollister Hall right here. And the chapel. And down to the intersection of Campus Road and College Avenue, Old College Avenue. The very avenue sung about by Harry Chapin, famous folk singer, who, while he didn't earn a degree, did study here. TCAP bus driver apparently didn't like the thought that I might cross the street. But she can't drivers. You still there, Brian? I think I'm still up and running. I don't want to cross illegally here because uh, they've. Uh, they're handing out jaywalking tickets, you may have read, trying to crack down on uh, pedestrian traffic, or I should say pedestrian traffic causing traffic. So after an hour and 20 minutes, here we are, back at the entrance to Ho Plaza. <laughs> and don't think I don't appreciate that, Alejandro. Well, I hope you enjoyed tuning in. It took uh, 120 minutes, or 120 minutes, an hour and 20 minutes, but I think we did a pretty good uh, circle through campus here on this snowy Friday, and we will try to do more of these. If you'd like to see them, uh, We'll try to market them more in advance and maybe ask for opinions on which ability you'd like to see with it. In the building. Enjoy your weekend. Archived. So if you want to watch it again or share it with anyone, it will live on the CAA Facebook page. Uh, and you can watch it uh, in recorded fashion. So thank you again, and we will see you soon.